Okay, a very good morning. Thursday, 28th of November. Happy Black Friday, if that's a thing that I can say. But um, in the briefing this morning, going to talk about really two subjects from, from my side. The much and highly anticipated poll from YouGov using their MRP model, which Boris Johnson is set to win the biggest majority in more than three decades. We're going to have a look at that. Pound higher this morning. And then we're going to look at the S&P 500 because indices have moved the opposite direction. Uh, quite a decent drop in US futures seen on the back of latest developments where Trump has essentially given his backing and signed legislation supporting Hong Kong protesters. And that throwing into jeopardy then uh, the likelihood of a phase one deal being concluded with the threat still remaining at this point of those tariffs due to come in in two weeks' time should we remain at an impasse in those negotiations. So they're the two main things I'm going to talk about. But before I do, I did do a poll on our YouTube channel yesterday and just wanted to clear up a few things. One is, if you ever or regularly watching these videos, well, first of all, thank you very much for, for watching. If you do, uh, do remember to subscribe to the channel. But the other thing is, um, that we, if you click on the description of the video, we timestamp all of the different chapters of the different things we're talking about. So if you ever just want to listen to what we say about Brexit or Trump or the technical analysis from Sam, you can just click on that and drop down and click specifically on those areas. So just to make life a bit easier for you guys. Anyway, let's crack on and let's talk about, first of all, the charts this morning and what, what are things looking like. And uh, pretty quiet overall. Those two news items are really the definitive forces that are moving those respective asset classes at the moment. So really the pound and uh, US index futures reflecting a little bit of risk off. So gold up three bucks, top right. T-notes up three ticks, bottom right. And WTI crude moving to the downside at the moment. Actually, in fact, just touching fresh session lows as I'm speaking, down 43 cents. So coming in close proximity uh, about 12 cents away from this S1, which would coincide with around the low point that we saw yesterday following the oil inventories and the DOE when we moved decidedly to the downside in the, the post kind of price action. So a little bit of risk off there, but obviously the pound is one of which most people are looking at this morning if you're based in the UK. Uh, why? Well, let's discuss that in a bit more detail. We had this big jump in price um, last night because one of the major polls that came out was this. And if I transition my screens, uh, this was the, um, you remember this is one we've been talking about for a while. This is this MRP kind of methodology adopted by YouGov who correctly identified the hung parliament situation uh, of the 2017 election. So a lot of people were looking with greater emphasis on this one. I think the sample size that I read when I was looking at the details was 100,000. And if you think about it, the other uh, surveys that we've had typically average at around 1,500 for a sample size. Uh, the MRP model also um, identifies different types of voters predicting their behavior, allowing YouGov to work out how many of each of these voter types there are in each electoral district in order to produce a fairly detailed uh, forecasting for each individual unique constituency. Uh, and what it came out with was this. Uh, Boris Johnson is set for a 68-seat majority, uh, and that would be, in fact, on track for the biggest majority if that were to come true on December the 12th in three decades. Um, it put then them up 42 from their previous election. Um, and in terms of the other performances, Labour then, the specific numbers, Tories 359, Labour 211, S&P 43, Lib Dems putting in a shocker, uh, I think that would be plus one. So despite you know how popular they were, you remember the polls before the election was called, they were pretty much neck and neck with Labour at one point. Um, and they were really trying to go after, or well, Labour was all, almost on the defensive, if you like, trying to hold on to a lot of their, uh, the voters that could have gone that way, particularly on the issue of Brexit. Uh, but so far that has severely backfired, according to this data, for the Lib Dems and would be a massive blow for Joe Swinson, who you would think... Again, we could go through the conveyor belt of the next Lib Dem leader if that was to be the end result. But a couple of things I just wanted to comment first about the mechanics of how the pound reacted last night. Then I'll give a bit of a view about what I think about these results. So let's go back to the pound chart. A few things 
few things here I wanted to have a look at. And this was this is putting the sterling future on a one minute. Now remember, in terms of sterling futures, of course, the, the market does shut for one hour. So if you're looking at the spot, obviously a little bit different. And the thing though I wanted to draw attention to is this price movement here. Now the poll did not come out until 10 p.m. And yet check this out. This, this candlestick here was at 9.54. That was at 9.55, 6, 7, 8, 9 into the close. Now, one thing that was happening, if you were, as I said, this was a highly anticipated poll. So if you were vigilant on Twitter, uh, this is definitely where if there is any rumor mongering going on prior to a big event, it almost certainly comes from Twitter rather than traditional news wires who aren't allowed to report unauthenticated kind of news that's the beauty of social media in that sense and there was this guy Christian Kalagi I'm not going to say how you say his name precisely uh, but he got retweeted I mean this is a guy who certainly I I don't follow I mean his his bio, his bio if he just went on that is a, a little bit suspect but he's connected to Guido Fawkes who anyone who follows UK politics. This is probably um, the most influential um, political website. Uh, I mean, these guys have got 300,000 followers. They are ba they basically, they break all of the inside scoops when it comes to UK British politics. And Guido Fawkes retweeted this. And it came, you can see here, um, almost an hour before the actual result came out. And if you see what this chap said, he said, I'm hearing 211 for Labour predicted seats from the MRP YouGov poll. And then go back to the article, what did Labour get? 211. And so he then followed up. There was a secondary tweet that this chap made that then got retweeted. This one came out uh, as well. He was talking about the fact that Tories are heading for 50 plus and so on. But right on the money now the question i want to cover here that i get is well how tradable is this type of information and i'd say it's it's almost it's almost highly untradable in that sense because if you were looking at the market i mean look look at the pound here it's not moving at all but it doesn't move really if you know if there's a chap on twitter who's i mean that christian um, has about seven thousand followers so it's not a uh, it's a decent amount, but not a great deal. Uh, Guido Fawkes, though, has over a quarter million. So when that gets the retweet, that's where the action happens because then it, see, it hits more eyeballs. But if you were just going to go blindly just trusting what is, a, uh, I guess, an unqualified rumor, then if you got long there, it would have looked great for a moment and then you would have been onside a decent 25 pips and then it just would have swung right back and you would have got stopped out and then it would have gone your way and then obviously the poll came out and we in the futures at least you know, we gapped up to reflect some of that move but yeah it would have been highly speculative trade and you're basically taking a bit of a punt on whether or not you want to believe what the, the rumors are saying so yeah just interesting to see that price action uh, you could have easily have got pulled into that uh, i think just going into it and probably as well i mean if there's any intraday traders Probably liquidity is pretty bad. You're going into Thanksgiving. People are not wanting to leave an open position on the back of that poll, given it could have swung wildly in either direction. And consequently, the pound could have gone down as well as up to the tune that it has. So that probably helped exacerbate some of that choppiness. Um, having a look back at the chart where we are at the moment, you can see a bit of seesaw price action. I mean, we've kind of identified, and Sam will go over the technicals more, I'm sure, about what he views from the setup here but you can see we gapped up came back down and it's kind of a, a traditional kind of technical play here with the, uh, finding a bit of support on the initial on the futures at least where the market closed push back up back up to the original top and then we've come back down again um, there is at the top of this rectangle here if we start broadening broadening that price action out on the 120 you can see there's a descending trend line from mid november encapsulating some of those areas there that you've got the high on the 18th the 21st and that's kind of that triple top and where the markets reacted as well on the trend line it hasn't confirmed that break yet uh, maybe just restricting some of the upside price action 
So that's, yeah, again, I'll leave the rest to, to Sam on that fold. But having a look at a few other things I wanted to mention, um, this was looking then at YouGov model estimates about the Conservatives would gain a net 42 seats if an election were held today. Uh, this is quite an interesting breakdown. It basically looks at the Conservative margin by percentage points. So here you can see Barrow and Furness um, much higher, looking at which is over 15 point majority. So here, these are ones of which I would view as, you know, kind of uh, somewhat of a done deal. What I'm more interested in, and I thought what was a very interesting statistic, is that there's at least 30 seats of which the Conservatives have a less than 5% margin, is what I was reading last night. Uh, and so that, for me, spells, although the headline would suggest a resounding victory for Boris Johnson, um, there is still some of those within the kind of catchment area that could be susceptible to swings. Now, one thing that I thought was um, quite telling and actually very prudent was Dominic Cummings. Dominic Cummings really has like a, a blog website and he blogged yesterday, which was quite telling, I thought. And he said, voiced his fears about complacency. Now, I think that's a very sh strong move by Cummings because what this can lead to is a little bit of Theresa May 2.0. So what I mean by this is people hear a poll it's a resounding victory for Boris Johnson. And all of a sudden, Tory voters, like they did with Theresa May, given a similar type of setup that the polls are indicating ahead of 2017, go, do you know what? Don't need to even bother. Boris is going to walk it. And by default, then, you're, you, you've got a, a, a potential calamity on your hands, as we saw um, in 2017, whereby, uh, again, literally complacency has led to that. So Dominic Cummings, rightly so, as the conservative strategist, has come out to try and mitigate that head on. He basically said that a hung parliament remains a, quote, a real possibility. So a lot of this, I think, is just, um, again, tactical to cajole sentiment in order to keep um, th these conservative voters engaged because every vote is going to matter in order to really see this come home into what was reflective in the MRP poll. Now, one thing with this MRP poll that I would like to add is that there was another poll that came out last night. Um, so even though, of course, the attention is on the MRP poll given its, its uh, methodology, but the other poll was for Comres for the Daily Telegraph. And that suggested Labour is narrowing the gap on the Conservatives with the Tories on 41%, down one point from the weekend, and Labour up two points at 34% at the expense of the Lib Dems, who are down on 13 So one thing um, to be clear here, the size, scope, and complexity of the MRP poll is backward-looking. Um, I've heard it's a couple of mixed reports between one to two weeks Whereas the groundwork, the field work done with the more recent polls is obviously capturing much closer sentiment. So what I was saying yesterday, the MRP is inflexible in its ability to capture any late swings or changes in sentiment. And this Comres poll for the Daily Telegraph fits the exact same narrative of what we've seen from all of the polls that have come out since the beginning of the week. So what I'm saying is, is that the MRP poll has captured a moment in time which at that moment in time the Conservatives were ramping ahead or romping ahead in every single poll. That has changed. So what I'd be more interested in is if MRP poll from YouGov, if they rerun another one between now and then two weeks' time, right before the election, that would be way more interesting at that point. I could, I'd say you could be much more strongly of belief that that would be the end outcome because two weeks obviously is an incredibly long time in politics and so yeah my initial view here if I'm talking purely on fundamentals kind of disregarding a little bit some of the price action is sure short-term speculators have bumped the price higher but I think the market will be 
a little bit less assured to just power home the pound and get long on the fact that this is now a done deal. Um, and I still believe, as I said yesterday, that polls coming further forward will, as the Comres one has shown overnight, continue to show this narrowing storyline. Uh, and that, I think, is going to have to um, see the pound fade going forward uh, over the next two weeks. I still, still maintain that view, irrespective of the pop that we've had overnight. Okay, final part on the Brexit side, um, or two parts. One is this following the result of that, that poll last night. Um, BBC News are reporting that Labour's going to change its strategy with two weeks to go. So basically, um, insiders say in the first half of the election campaign, a key error was that the Liberal Democrat threat has been overestimated, while the willingness of Leave voters to switch from Labour to Conservatives was underestimated. So if you remember, um, can, the uh, Lib Dems were seen as an absolutely credible threat, but as soon as the election has been called, Liberal Democrat support has just tanked in the polls. And um, rather than focus head on the issue of Brexit, which has obviously been the objective of Boris Johnson, um, Jeremy Corbyn's kind of been emphasising different areas, particularly on the NHS, for example. But now, given what we've seen from this poll, where it's looking like conservatives are being able to really target some of those Labour leave areas. The tactical switch now from Labour, apparently, for the next two weeks is going to be, right, let's just, let's just try to battle then these key areas uh, on the issue uh, of Brexit because it looks like Lib Dems are no longer a credible threat in terms of the referendum issue on the, on the Brexit side about the Remain and so on. Um, there are some more TV debates happening. You do have um, tonight, uh, the one tonight's probably a little less impactful overall. It's the emergency on planet Earth, the debate. Um, then the more important one, I'd say, you've got the BBC election debate, which is happening tomorrow night, so Friday night at 7pm. And then there's a few more to come before the actual day of voting. So, so five more in total, as you can see there on that screenshot. Um, the other thing to mention on the macro side is we've had a dip in global stock indices overnight in the Asia Pacific session. Uh, that came after, as you can see on your futures chart, uh, late yesterday, kind of commencement of the Asia session, US futures got hit. So let me just show you what that looks like. Here's the S&P 500 future. You can see a drop right on 11 o'clock um, as the markets uh, reopened. Obviously, we closed from 10 to 11 in the futures. As soon as it reopened, uh, we pulled back all of the gains that were seen in, in yesterday afternoon's session. So we pulled back off those all-time highs. Now, why did that happen? Well, this is that, that storyline that's been ongoing for a while. Some were perhaps a little bit um, still open to the possibility that perhaps Trump didn't want to jeopardize the ongoing trade negotiations. So despite the kind of bipartisan agreement in Congress to push forward pretty much unanimously uh, support for the uh, pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong. Donald Trump did in fact come through and sign that legislation in support. And what's happened overnight, the US ambassador, uh, I think in, in Hong Kong, has been called to speak to Chinese officials. Chinese officials have come out and threatened retaliation. All of this, of course, is coming just as they're about to sign a phase one trade deal. So this new law passed expressing support, US support for these Hong Kong protesters. Does this put a bit of a spanner in the works for conclusion of, these, uh, of this deal, which obviously has been a key component of helping equities push up to these record high levels? One thing I would say with the S&P, you know, let's not take it too far out of context. Yes, we dipped a decent 10 points overnight, but I mean, just look at how where we are in the longer term picture. I mean, here, I think that technical chart on the dailies is quite telling because we are right bang on that trend line, as you can see, going back from what the May, July test, the early November or mid-November test. And then we're right back on the pullback to that level there at the moment. So it's a pretty strong area of support that you've got there on the dailies around 41. Uh, and that would coincide with some of that price action that you can see here when you start kind of zooming it down onto a more short time frame. Uh, so 
Yeah, again, it's kind of one of those where these push hires consolidation, push higher consolidation. I think that's still very much a, uh, a, a prudent kind of approach to these pullbacks. I still don't see what's happened as an overall uh, signal that we're in for a sharp correction in markets. I think that move all in all is relatively small, perhaps a bit reflective of the fact that a lot of American participants, of course, out the market celebrating uh, Thanksgiving. So even if we did come back, the point being, I still think that uh, the market is still in a phase of, of consolidation, if anything, but a pretty solid support level there to keep an eye on. Uh, calendar for today, what have we got? So very much a, a morning-centric day, uh, and I would say a lot of the move perhaps has already happened. So if you were in the market early, then sure, perhaps the best trades have already been done, re re kind of digestion and reaction to the, the two events that I've said that have unfolded late last night. Otherwise, for this morning, a couple of things. You have had the first of the German state CPIs. Saxony's come in minus 0.8%. Previously was plus 0.1%. Um, the year on year, though, 1.1 against previous 1%. Uh, so the other German state CPIs will be coming out littered through the morning. Uh, I've had a headline out of North Korea while we've been delivering this briefing. Launched an unidentified projectile according to the Japanese Coast Guard. It appears to be a missile, according to Yonhap. I mean, that sounds like pretty sensational, uh, but it did likely fall, fall outside of Japan's exclusive economic zone. So again, it's very interesting that as, as soon as Trump signs these deals, as soon as the, the, uh, a trade war becomes, looks a little less likely it's going to get done, North Korea start firing missiles again. So again, for me, it totally is in fitting with the North Korea um, pickup in activity is directly correlated with putting a bit of pressure and leverage on this later situation, on this, this legislation. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it. You've got some 10 o'clock data, which on your calendar looks pretty um, important. It's the kind of European suite of sentiment readings, but they very rarely have ever moved the market. So uh, perhaps um, just keeping half an eye on the German state CPIs would be prudent. But otherwise, there's nothing coming out in the afternoon, of course, because of the holiday in the US. The early closures, um, so electronic trade is going to close early. So if you are trading equity, uh, interest rate, FX, energy, metal futures on Globex, on the CME, they're going to close at 6 o'clock London time instead of the regular, uh, regular 10 p.m. close if you're in London. Um, CME, Pitt, Nisey, Floor, both closed today. Uh, Speaker-wise, the only one really took out for a couple of ECB speakers later, Coa and ECB's Lane, late in the evening. Okay, that is it from me. I uh, hope that was useful. As I said, remember, um, just today and going forward in future, we timestamp on YouTube all of the, the topics that we cover. So hopefully that makes life a bit easier uh, for you guys watching in future. All right, thanks. Catch you later. Hi well, guys, good morning. Happy Thanksgiving uh, to those out in the, the States. Have a, a quick look over the Euro to begin with uh, before we talk about stocks and the RSI divergence, which is obviously the reason we've come lower. Um, so having a, a look at the Euro, and I was just eyeing up on my own charts. I quite like the, the look of any sort of retracement a bit higher up today. Uh, but given the, uh, the volume likely to be a bit lower, whether we could get up towards the R1 area or not, I'm not too sure. But that is a, is a general point I, d I do like the look of. Uh, you've got maybe a tiny bit higher as well on here looking 30 minutes, 110.33. Uh, got the high from yesterday around 3 a.m. in that breakdown area. I, I, I would like the, I would like it to, to come there for, for a place to get short. Um, it's whether we can get up that uh, anytime soon. I think today is going to be a case of waiting uh, on your hands anyway. Having a look at those lows, you can see we've got a relatively well-respected trend line, uh, which could potentially break later on and, and lead to uh, a move lower down. I think that's always something to, to keep a, a watch on. Um, but yeah, if we can get up towards that point, uh, that would be of interest. Just having a look before we were to get there, you'd have to get through 110.26, which uh, was a good opportunity, it has to be said yesterday. You can see we broke through and then came back to test it a couple of times uh, around 7 and 3 o'clock. Of course, it always looks easier in hindsight 
uh, having a look at this um, as a potential place to get short. And then on the 240, just having a look here, you can see uh, obviously the significance of that failure to maybe close above, close below, I should say, that, that low that we had from the 14th. Just how significant will that be? I've had uh, other balls giving it uh, a go here and into the end of the week, volume lower. Are we actually about to see a bit of a, a push on? So where we closed the week, as we said yesterday, for the Euro, uh, the Pound and the Aussie on these, uh, or what were these lows, will be obviously quite important. A break of that, 110, and then you are looking down to those October lows uh, from the 8th and the 1st, respectively, uh, for the Euro. For the Pound, of course, uh, this time yesterday, we were right on that low, um, and it came down with the S1, literally kind of when we were doing the briefing, only to reverse and... Uh, what will be will be uh, for the rest of that day uh, or what will be what was I should say but uh, yeah this trend line holding things up you obviously got quite a, a bit of noise above if we were to break through the R1 and then each of those highs and of course that really significant 130 uh, which of course if we were to break that that point would be uh, an area it could be attracted to I would say to the downside you know looking for uh, a better opportunity better value to buy the pound today would be perhaps wise to, to go about it. Where could that be? Well, 129, 23, a bit of resistance, you can see, was also on the 25th, give or take a, a couple of ticks, and obviously the initial high from yesterday before that spike through. Uh, would also be, you know, that low of the day, so a bit of profit taking come in, that could be a nice area to get in, and also the pivot, if it was to come down even further. But by then, you know, that would be a full retracement and more, You'd have to start asking what's really going on uh, if that's the case. So 129.23, a key line in the sand that uh, you'd think the bulls would want to protect. The trend line to the top is definitely worth keeping an eye on. Uh, as you can see, that's already uh, circled and marked out. Having a quick look over uh, at the Aussie, uh, we are, as we put this onto a 240, you can see we have now closed, well, we're looking like we're going to close below that low of the 14th and yesterday. So how significant will this be? The Aussie under some pressure, I would say we can now start to, well, we've almost made through what would have been, I suppose, that first target, the, uh, the 16th, uh, 7 a.m. high, uh, but then looking for that low, which is down at 67.36. So the Aussie has been drifting lower. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Obviously, the negative trade comment overnight is not going to help. Uh, and the fact that uh, the S&P has been pushing higher and higher and higher off positive trade comments and the Aussie has done nothing uh, is a bit of a worry. Uh, so any retracement back to that point today, I think is definitely worth a go uh, unless trade comments were to suddenly turn around and, and get positive on Thanksgiving. Maybe not the biggest surprise in the world if that was to happen. Pivot, another key level, and also that top of that range R1. So those would be the three key points to the upside that I would really be looking uh, at for now. Trend lines seem a bit steep. Uh, so, yeah, that would be the focus. Having a, a look over gold, hardly moved really, did it overnight. Let's be honest, it's, it's not a massive move. Um, and actually, to be honest, the fact that we didn't quite get up to, to test that previous low of yesterday morning uh, is quite key. I suppose, well, I suppose we did really, but 1464.8, that's going to be the key level uh, to the upside before maybe getting towards that R1. And actually looking at the way gold traded yesterday, albeit, yes, you may have got um, taken into a sort of a false break of that previous low, it actually reacted quite well and uh, there was a couple of good opportunities. So those previous areas of support turn resistance or currently resistance would be where I'd be keeping an eye on 1464.8 and, and 67. Then to the downside, much like with the, the euro and any of these markets that have just you know, been on a downtrend and starting perhaps to turn around over the last couple of days, getting those trend lines on for a potentially bigger move and continuation might be uh, uh, the favoured choice. But right now, you know, with stocks uh, coming down in the early morning, you could be forgiven for maybe wanting a, a go at getting long above that 1464.8. Um, but overall, let's just still think about this recent trend in gold has been coming under pressure. Having a look over at oil, DOEs yesterday, uh, usual usual noise. Uh, and we're still back into that uh, that new range that we were on about. We were talking about this yesterday, how we were stuck in one for a couple of weeks. It looked like we finally broke out, only to then get back involved uh, uh, in this area as well. Can we get out of it? I guess the, the close of the week will be key, but uh, really, is there going to be that much volume heading in? 
Uh, and just to reiterate up towards those highs today on the R1 is yesterday's high and it was top of that range uh, and the low we almost getting down to uh, the S1 but it was also to pretty much bang on the low of the 22nd those will be the key points if we lower it down to 15 minutes just above the pivot level is, is going to be an area of note the closing high yesterday also a bit of support yesterday 58.22 would I be interested in anywhere other than that as it stands not really not unless uh, things started to pick up and not really expecting that to happen. There you go, S&P come down. Uh, we broke through 31.50 on the one third time of asking, uh, pushed higher, made a, a new all-time high across the board only to, to come down very late on. And uh, I guess an opportunity if you're you know, favouring this market to continue, uh, you'd be looking at 31.46.50. You'd see the amount of times we have tested that I think you'd be quite brave to want to go short again there. So a break of that to maybe target really towards 31.50 uh, could be a good op opportunity to get four or so points. Looking at the, the key low, let's call it the high of the 26th before the push through, then the lows of yesterday, you can just see how important a zone that is. Uh, I think we could stay in that zone for, for a while this morning, just considering the overall volume um, as well. Would I uh, favour the long from around there again? Maybe you'd want to see a, a bit of a five minute close uh, above that area before getting in. But certainly uh, the range trade could be a, a better option looking to continue the overall trend uh, of this market. So those would be the key levels looking, let's call it the bottom there, 31.40 uh, and then to the top 31.46 uh, uh, and a half as well. Any questions as usual, uh, please do let us know. Worth noting the, uh, the low of yesterday for the DAX has provided some support. Uh, and obviously we did gap lower, so anyone that trades the DAX, obviously keep a, an eye on that as we know. Uh, if we were to get maybe above the, the high of today, you can see a further push higher. The S&P then obviously breaks that, that high as well. Uh, so I want to, to keep an eye on the DAX is finding support on what's been a, a pretty key level. The overall lower part of that range still uh, a fair bit below as well. Hope you all have a, a good trading day uh, and I'll catch you all in the chat.